our mateys welcome to sea of thieves this is damron if you've been following this tip series you know we are on part four so now we're going to do some intermediate tips we've covered the basics getting started a few beginner tips so now we're going to get into 10 intermediate tips to help you be more pirate out on the seas um, and then after this we'll have the final part which is some advanced tips for some more experienced sailors i got some pretty good stuff in there i'm really excited um, to get that out i think a lot of you guys are really going to enjoy that um, video so tip number one for our intermediate section is just by utilizing the harpoon there is an advanced technique we'll talk about um, in the advanced section but for this portion let's talk about what the harpoon can basically do and one is it's really going to help you docking um, you don't have to waste the time really perfecting the boat rolling up to the dock you can really utilize the harpoon, one, to get you closer, hold you in place, and you can really utilize it to just pull yourself right up to the dock that you're going to see here. You know, as soon as you shoot it, just hold left trigger, and you can use the stick to pull in, even look around and kind of make you circle. The harpoon's also really good to get treasure off of islands. Instead of swimming everything to your boat, you can just bring it to the, you know, a rock or something, and then you can just shoot the harpoon and grab everything. You you can also harpoon your teammates, you can harpoon enemies, and you can also harpoon items out of people's hands, including items out of enemy hands. Um, so those are just a few useful things that you can do with the harpoon. Moving on to intermediate tip number two, we're going to talk about the anchor turn. The anchor turn is a classic move in Sea of Thieves. It's really going to help you when you're trying to outmaneuver somebody on the seas. And simply is done by turning the wheel all the way left or all the way right and just dropping the anchor. Now when you do this, you immediately want to get back to the anchor and get it right back up. Depending on the speed at which you are sailing, that will determine how much of a turn you're going to get. And if you're going about full speed and you do an anchor turn, you can expect to do a pretty good 180. A slower speed, you may not turn as much. This is very useful for smaller ships trying to get away from larger ones. Intermediate tip number three, let's talk about the explosive barrel fuse. I'm actually surprised that a lot of people, when they first start playing, it takes them a long time to realize you can actually diffuse this. You you know, you got the barrel in your hand, you light it with right trigger, but if you press left trigger or the equivalent of that on PC, you will actually diffuse the, you know, you will put out the fuse and you will reset it so it will start over. And it's good to know about how long that fuse is, which is about five seconds so if someone jumps on your boat puts a barrel down you can pick it back up and then you know delight it you know <laughs> unlight the fuse and that's also critical when you're attacking you want to drop the barrel with as little time left on the fuse as possible for them to defuse it but just enough time for you to get away without it killing you Intermediate tip number four, let's talk about the reload animation. This applies for all weapons. We're going to show you with the flintlock pistol just how it works. So understanding how this reload animation works is very critical to PvP combat situations where those split seconds can really matter. As I showed you there, as soon as you shoot the weapon, even if you take off running, it won't start the reload until you finish sprinting. So when you finish sprinting, that reload animation will occur. And just to show you just a typical reload, right, if you fire a weapon and you're not in a situation where you're going to sprint, then you can witness the full animation here. And also, another thing to note if you fire the weapon and you take off sprinting too early in the animation when you stop sprinting that animation will restart but if you wait to hear the hammer click and then sprint even when you come out of the sprint the weapon will already be reloaded and you do not have to actually see the entire animation again and that's for all weapons as soon as you hear the hammer click you can sprint and when those seconds matter that's when you're going to find that most useful Moving on to intermediate tip number five, we're going to talk about the sword lunge, and we're going to talk about the basics of the sword lunge. There's a lot of advanced techniques you can use with this, which we'll talk about later in the advanced section, but just know for now that holding a heavy attack with the sword will actually make you lunge forward. And this is very useful because if that lunge were to take you into the water before you hit land again, you will actually carry that momentum speed for a good distance, and you can actually launch yourself pretty far 
into the water with these sword lunges to get to an enemy boat, get to an island, or even get back to your boat. So that's really good and really useful to know to allow you to get around just a little bit quicker. All right, moving on to intermediate tip number six, and that's dodging. This is a pretty basic tip, but I'd like to keep the videos kind of 10-10, and I left all the combat in here. But just knowing that you can dodge can also provide you those little bit of inches that you may need in a PvP situation. And that's done just by holding block with your cutlass, and then jumping while holding a direction. So you can jump left, jump right, jump back, and even jump forward. So if you see an enemy charging up for a lunge, that quick little jump left could be the difference between life and death. Intermediate tip number seven, we're gonna talk about Megalodons and Krakens. And first and foremost, if you are in a situation where you want to fight them, drop your anchor. It's gonna make your life much easier unless you're trying to escape. And then also use a sniper rifle. The sniper rifle is gonna give you the most bang for your buck when you're fighting Megalodons and Krakens. Yes, pistols are accurate, but they do a little damage. And you're on your boat, you may as well hit maximum damage since you've got free reloads right here. So keep that in mind, keep the sniper out. And also when you're fighting them, what the thing about keeping the anchor down is, you know, the Megalodon will call, or not the Megalodon, sorry, the Kraken will cause your boat to spin around in circles. And that's really annoying. So keep the anchor down. And I'm, I'm just showing the Megalodon video, but this is gonna apply for both of those. And another quick tidbit about Megs, this doesn't apply to Krakens, of course, but if a Meg is on you, you're out of wood, or you're in a situation where you just can't, you know, you don't wanna fight them, really going to any rock formation, any island, will cause the Megalodon to swim away and not mess with you. And that's any rock formation. It doesn't have to be a named island. Any rock formation will cause that to happen. Intermediate tip number eight is the treasure box. Utilize the treasure chest, which you're seeing here. The treasure chests are found scattered throughout the islands. They're gonna have a nice bright white reflection when you see them, and they're gonna be empty. And you say, oh, this is just empty treasure chests. Well, they're good because you can store up to three smaller items in them from orders of soul skulls, you know, mermaids, your little trinkets, any small treasure item you can put three in, which is theoretically going to reduce the amount of work you need to do when selling the treasure. And you can carry three items over here and then just sell them all as opposed to running back and forth from your ship three times. So be sure you grab those when you're on the seas so when you get to the point when you're selling or you're loot, it'll make it faster. Intermediate tip number nine is utilizing the storage and the rowboat chests and for a variety of reasons. The first reason is that it's going to give you more areas to select from in situations where you may be fighting a Kraken, fighting enemy players, things like that. You know, your crew can have different areas at which you can find those resources. A little advanced tip is barrel balls. If you get into a fight where an enemy decides to shoot you with a barrel ball, now you cannot get resources for your period of time from your barrels you are locked out however that does not affect resource crates or the chest on your rowboat so always keep items in those rowboat chests and the crates for dire situations it doesn't have to be full um, but you should have some spares in those so keep those crates and keep them stocked a little bit Intermediate tip number 10, the final uh, little tip in our intermediate section, is that skeletons block bullets. Whenever you're in a situation like a, you know, skull fort or tall tails, which you're fighting a lot of skeletons, back up, get those, um, you know, back up a little bit so you can get the melee skeletons to kind of be in front of the weapon skeletons <laughs> and, uh, they're gonna block the bullets for you. And not there, right? I killed him and he just blasted me, but I think you'll show in this next, what's up, buddy? You'll see in this, huh? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Love you. Anyway, they will block the brunt of the force from the gun guys. If you are fighting the skeletons, like you're seeing here, boom. That blunderbuss just hit me right in the face, but I took no damage from that because actually the damage was all absorbed by the melee skeletons sitting in front. So keep that in mind when you're fighting in groups of skeletons. It's going to keep you alive, and you're going to be able to wipe these guys up much 
easier than if you're just running around in circles keep them linear and get the gun guys in the back so i hope you guys found the tips helpful i hope you found it useful um if you did feel free to like and subscribe hopefully we'll see you in the next part which is going to be some more advanced tips i think you experienced sailors are really going to like that i got some good stuff to show you uh, a lot of things that some people you know i don't even know if a lot of people know about um some of it you know i'm sure some people have heard about and you know there's probably going to be one guy in the comments oh, i know all this well you're cool um, so stick around. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you out on the seas.